Today, we'll be comparing two complete everyday carry kits at two drastically different price points. In the first of this series, I went with a Woodlands theme of brown and green earth tones. But today, we're going with the Blackout Edition. Starting just like last time with the wallet, on the budget end, I'm going with the Alpaca Zip Pouch. A style of wallet I've never personally used, but one that many of you like based on your comments in my previous videos. Coming in at 25 USD, it punches above its weight class in terms of durability with this X-Pac VX21 exterior fabric and waterproof YKK AquaGuard zippers. With two compartments, both of which have Alpaca's bright orange ripstop nylon interiors to easily see what's inside, while the smaller front zip compartment is especially useful if you need a place to store coins. This wallet, although slim, has quite a large footprint compared to other slim wallets and can accommodate so much. Look, I dropped 20 cards and some folded cash in here and there's still plenty of room to spare. It's also got this loop here that's designed to work seamlessly with Alpaca's hub ecosystem, where you can attach these strong magnetic rings that you can anchor to their hub organization rails when you get home and snap to the clips when you head out. Moving on to the more expensive side, for the wallet, we're going with the Groove Wallet by Groove Life in their midnight black with black leather sleeve configuration. With an aircraft grade aluminum body paired with this firm yet soft touch leather sleeve, the materials and execution are fantastic. But the real winner is the mechanism. Just listen. That automatic slide and spring back is so satisfying in both confidence of motion and fidget factor, but it's not just a gimmick. With cards loaded in when you let her slide, the cards fan out for super easy identification and use. You'll also notice that when extracted, this pivoting corner pops out a bit, but springs right back when the cards are popped back in, ensuring they're securely inside with no chance of shaking free. The downside, at least for me, you're quite limited with the quantity of cards you can carry. Groove Life says the aluminum compartment can store up to six cards, but in my testing, that's only if all six cards are flat, and with most credit and debit cards having raised embossed numbers and letters, five is the realistic max capacity. I need to carry seven cards total, and with a capacity of five in the main compartment and one in the leather sleeve, that means at full capacity, this wallet accommodates one less card than I need it to on the daily. And hey, since it doesn't accommodate my own needs, let me know down in the comments below if I should do a giveaway for this one in an upcoming video. But bringing in the budget wallet to join it, this price delta of nearly five times is really all about your needs and your preferences. And like everything I'll be sharing in this video, they are both linked down in the description below if you want to check them out for yourself. But keeping the momentum moving, let's slide on over to the next component of these complete EDC kits, the pocket knives. On the budget side, some of you EDC heads might not consider this a knife in its purest form, but I am going with a Swiss Army knife. This black Victorinox Huntsman is one of the best balances of footprint and functionality, meaning it's not too bulky while offering a ridiculous amount of usefulness per cubic inch. With all this functionality, I think everyone, EDC squad or not, can benefit from owning a Swiss Army knife or multi-tool. Me personally, I'm always at the workshop and studio, so whether I'm processing cardboard, carving up some material, slicing tape, poking and prodding at machined parts, a dedicated folding knife is always in my pocket. Which is funny, because as we move onto the higher end in these all black kits, I've opted for a knife that I would never carry because for my frequent workshop use cases, it's just not functional. It's the super cool design CRKT Provoke First Responder. Just look at the deployment. Actually, let me close it and hold it up to the mic. So satisfying. Again, though super impractical for my daily use cases, I think it'll be tough to find anyone, even folks who have zero interest in everyday carry knives, who'd think the mechanism and design isn't one of the most unique they've ever seen. Designed by Joe Caswell for CRKT, this morphing karambit has a 2.41 inch curved plain edge blade processed with titanium nitride to black it out. And speaking of the steel, coming in with an MSRP of 230 US dollars, if we're evaluating it based solely on the blade steel, I think it's definitely overpriced for the mid-range D2 blade stock. However, that's if we are evaluating solely based on blade steel. When factoring in the design, satisfying deployment, fidget factor, and just plain uniqueness, the pricing gets more and more palatable, especially if a curved karambit blade is practical for your use cases. But bringing the Victorinox Huntsman back into the picture and tossing up the MSRPs, we've got a more than five times price difference between these two knives. But for now, we'll dash on over to the flashlights. The torch is in these kits, and on the budget end, I have here the super compact Olight i1R2 Pro. This thing is tiny. 
It's a twist to engage keychain torch that starts at a nice soft 5 lumens that continuously illuminates for up to 12 hours, but with a further twist blasts to 180 lumens with continuous illumination for over 20 minutes. And with an MSRP of 22 US dollars, this baby torch is tremendously budget friendly. My favorite feature though, with this OneEye R2 Pro, it's finally modernized with USB Type-C charging. Not to be confused with the non-Pro version with the outdated micro USB interface. Access the charging port by unscrewing all the way to let the spring-loaded mechanism pop out to reveal it. On the expensive end, I've decided to go with the Nightcore T4K. I love this light. I love the square body. Set it down confidently with no risk of rolling. The deep carry clip is oriented perfectly to anchor to the brim of my cap for hands-free illumination. And as for illumination, it can cycle through four intensities for any use case from 1 lumen to 15 to 65 to 200. And as you can see, there's this really easy to read and understand status screen that lets you know how much longer you have. With a 1000 milliamp battery inside, you can see here at 1 lumen, I've got over 60 hours remaining. Then cycling up to a max sustained output of 200 lumens, I've got nearly three hours of continuous illumination. For the turbo mode, the name T4K says it all. It has a comically and hilariously bright blast of 4,000 lumens where you see right here the descending countdown bar on the screen. Not because the battery drains that fast, but because the heat generated is so high that it automatically limits the duration to prevent heat damage to the internals. I need to be clear, 4,000 lumens is hilariously yet terrifyingly bright. With my eyes closed tight and shining for one second, means that when I open my eyes back up, I'm still seeing spots right now. I can go on and on about this flashlight, but at such a compact size, the same length as my thumb, and with such versatile and long-lasting output, the icing on the cake is that, like our baby budget option, it's also modernized with USB Type-C charging. As I bring the i1R2 back into compare, this Nightcore T4K had an initial MSRP of 100 US dollars at launch, and similar to every category we've explored so far, sits at around five times the price of the budget option. With the torches out of the way, let's scoot on over to the key ring solutions. On the budget end, I've gone with my favorite EDC accessory, period, this black s Beaner by Night Eyes. If you've been with me for a bit, you know I love these things. I usually sing the praises of the number 4 size, but for keys, I'd recommend the much smaller number 2 size. This dual s beaner means you can clip your keys to one end and lock them in place with the slide lock and use the other side to anchor, say, your flashlight for easy removal and use, or clip it to your belt loop or an anchor point inside your bag or sling. At 3 US dollars, I can't believe how affordable and useful s beaners are in general. But moving on to the premium keyring solution, we've got the Orbit Key Key Organizer and Clip Bundle to check out. It's funny, all the way back in 2013, I backed the original Orbit Key on Kickstarter, and it's been awesome, nearly a decade later, seeing them continue to grow and expand their offering. This bundle not only features its gorgeous black Safiano leather key organizer that eliminates key jingling by turning all of your keys into a compact fold-out kit, but also comes with their Clip V2, a black metallic carabiner with magnetic quick-release keyring. You can use them separately for different sets of keys, or you can combine them like I've done over here so that you can pocket it all, or have them clipped to the carabiner with rapid magnetic access. But bringing the s beaner back into the mix, this category has the biggest price difference so far, with just $3 for the dual carabiner and $85 for the premium key organization and anchoring set. Closing out the key solutions, we move on over to the wristwatches. When it comes to watches, I like being able to tell the time at a glance, so visual contrast is important to me personally. But don't worry, I'll be sharing all black alternatives if you really want to maintain that true blackout look. The watches in both kits are by far the most expensive components, and on the budget side, I've opted for the Seiko 5 Sports SRPD55K. Now here, I'm showing the older discontinued SKX007, but bringing the new Seiko 5 Sports model on screen, you can see the clear similarities. Checking on Amazon at the time of recording this video, the SRPD55K could be picked up for 221 US dollars, and for an automatic mechanical timepiece with the pedigree and deep history of Seiko's watchmaking heritage, it's just an incredible bang for buck value. But like I said, I promise to include true all black options and the Seiko 5 Sports is also available through reference number SRPD79. And by the way, if you want to go all black but also aren't really interested in an automatic mechanical movement, Casio's got you covered with the likes of the beloved GA2100. 
On the expensive end, I'm going with the Hamilton Intramatic Auto Chronograph. I did an in-depth review of this gorgeous timepiece a few months back, which I'll link down in the description below in case you are interested. And I absolutely love this watch. With an MSRP of 2,200 US dollars though, it's actually considered a budget option in the world of automatic mechanical chronographs. But for us regular folks, that's still a huge sum of money, so I'm still calling it expensive and fitting for this higher end complete kit. Bringing the Seiko back into view, we've got a nearly 10x price delta with these watches. But if you really are interested in picking up one of these Hamiltons and have a bit of patience, they dip below 2,000 US dollars several times a year. Next up, notebooks. When it comes to budget notebooks, I typically recommend field notes. But since I don't have a black one on hand, I'm tossing this very similar black alpaca notebook into our budget kit. At five US dollars, it's actually a dollar more than field notes from a unit price perspective. So I'll link both this one and the black field note set of three down in the description. For the more expensive kit, I've opted for this A6 notebook by this brand. And I want you to read it out loud to yourself right now. Go ahead, I'll wait. Because I literally ended up making a long distance call to their headquarters in Germany to find out so I wouldn't embarrass myself in this video. I was told the anglicized way to pronounce it properly are you ready? Is Loistrum. But going back on track, this A6 size is nice and compact for everyday carry. I went with this soft cover version because I figured it'd be much more comfortable in pocket since it can flex more with your movement. It features two bookmarking ribbons, a secure closing elastic, as well as an accordion style pocket against the inside back cover. With an MSRP of 20 US dollars and bringing the alpaca notebook back into frame, we can see that there's a 4X price jump between the two. But if we're going by page count, I think the Loistrum is technically cheaper. So this is awkward and we're just gonna go ahead and move on to the pens. And right away on the budget side, this S gel by Sharpie is pretty freaking awesome. I was skeptical because naturally when you and me hear the word Sharpie, we think permanent marker, but check it out. At $3, it's got a smooth writing experience, and best of all, look, immediately after writing, zero smearing and smudging. On the higher end, I've gone with the Koweco AL Sport ballpoint clicker. It's called the AL because the body is made of aluminum and it's got that satisfying heft in both weight and diameter, with its thickness making it suitable for long writing sessions. My favorite part of it though is that its stubbiness combined with this octagonal barrel makes me feel like a kid. I mean, this thing looks and sits in the hand the same way old school crayons did when I was a little kid. But even the manufacturing is fantastic. I'll hold it up to the mic and just listen to the retracting click. It's got a real hefty thunk. With an MSRP of 70 US dollars, comparing it to our Sharpie S gel, this Kaweco is definitely a statement piece, reserved only for those who love this look. Next up, we've got storage. And on the budget end, I'm going with this catch-all tray from Hoferufer. I'll take my buddy Cam the Chameleon out to measure the dimensions, in case you want to make sure everything in your everyday carry kit will fit. It's got an interior width of nine and a half inches or 24 centimeters, and an interior height of seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. Coming in at $20, it definitely looks real classy for the price, and as you can see, fits everything in the budget EDC kit with plenty of room to spare. On the high-end side, we have got another Orbit Key banger called the Nest. This thing is brilliant, check it out. It's got a sleek polycarbonate hard shell construction with the base wrapped in a premium nylon poly fabric. The top is wrapped in genuine leather and the elastic closure anchors to a zinc alloy pill stop. It can be opened either backwards with a self-standing hinge or with no fiddling can be lifted straight up. But flipping the lid over, you can see the underside has so many cutout sleeves and this soft see-through mesh pocket to organize your small flat items. The base features a soft touch fabric to prevent scratches and to prevent things from kind of sliding around, the Orbit Key Nest comes with six dividers with the hook side of Velcro to easily yet securely attach however you want to to the bottom of the base, along with two cable organizers to keep cables or wired earbuds clean and tidy. But we're not done yet because as we show the back edge of the lid, we can see a USB Type-C port, which explains why the Nest ships with the USB cable. This left side of the lid is also a wireless charging pad, while the recessed right hand side acts as a shallow tray for other EDC or tech items that you access more frequently. At 110 US dollars, this is definitely a premium piece, but the materials, function, thoughtful design, and protective organization justify that price point. For the purposes of this blackout theme EDC kit though, 
everything in the high end complete kit fits inside the Orbit Key Nest securely. And as we lay everything out on both sides, all of which are linked down in the description below for you to look into if you are interested. We can run the final tally of these two complete Blackout EDC kits and see that the budget kit comes in at 338 US dollars, but drops down to 200 if you replace the Seiko 5 Sports Mechanical Watch with the Casio, and the higher end kit comes in at 2929 USD. So hey, why don't we add this black Kodra Alpaca Elements tech case to make it an even 3000 like the title said. Speaking of titles, this has been the second in this series of comparing two complete EDC kits at two drastically different price points. If you want to see the first one, you can watch that video right up here, and if you're feeling lucky, you'll be surprised with the contents of this video down here. I'll leave them both on screen for a few seconds so you can choose which one to watch, but while you're deciding, if you like your best friend, hit that like button to let him know. But if you got love for your best friend, like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you'll be notified the moment new videos just like this one drop.